Coming up. The seed takes a beating. What does that do? Some delicious discoveries. What do you say to that? Oh my god. Subsequently, flying water pump. And will it make fire? <laughs> yes. Yes, it will. That's good. Waiting for the airplane to go by. Blah, 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 blah. Maybe we move this so I don't <sighs> trip and die. Oh, I just noticed I have a stain on my shorts or 16. Aloha and welcome to M539 Restorations and to the episode where we're going to resurrect a legend, this car right over here, to jog your memoria. This is Project Castellon, the car which I bought in Castellon, España. It is the legendary 1980 E21, the very first 3 Series and top of the line model 323i with its beautiful 2.3 inline six engine 143 horsepower all manual manly car with its manual doggy transmission dog leg no ac no power steering no abs just you and the machine this example in particular has been off the road for only 26 years the last technical inspection expired in 1995 so it hasn't been driven for at least since then and if you remember when the car was delivered to me we found that there's some surface rust in all of the cylinders and cylinder number one in particular is pretty bad with some scoring and stuff happening inside. So we put some fogging oil for men and WD-40 inside to hopefully make life a bit easier. Now we're going to push it inside and see if we can get this thing running again. I'm not going to make any promises, but I'm going to do my best. And hopefully by the end of this episode, this engine is going to be singing the song again. The thing that I don't remember right now is if I reconnected a steering column because if you remember the keys were lost so in order to get it off the tow truck and inside I had to hammer off. Is that a rabbit? It is. Anyway, where was I? In order to get it off the truck and steer it inside I had to hammer off the column and manually steer the wheels. So where's the key? Let's see if I did that. Oh, sure didn't. Well, that's great. I think I tried and it was really difficult with the car being on the ground and whatnot. Anyway, I'm going to go get some humans and then we're going to push this thing inside. It just looks so good inside. <laughs> Do we there? Come on! <laughs> Perfect! Three horsepower. Thank you, gentlemen. A little bit of... And the third is in. What do you say we take a quick tour to Espana of the underneath? Because we never had this car in the lift before. Let's start in the back. Look at this exhaust. It's in mint condition for the age. We have disc brakes in the back, which is awesome. No stupid drum brakes. That's the weeds. And look just how lovely and rust-free it is. It's beautiful. It really is. Oh, more weeds and stuff. This car was probably sitting in a bush or something. Ooh, this one pokes. The engine is ever so oily, which is weird. As you all know, BMWs never, never leak oil. So very surprising to see that. Pretty strong indication it was living in weeds. Let's start peeling this onion and crack open the hood. Oh boy, I forgot how great all of this looks. Let's lose the hood. Break out the tools. 13 millimetro. Why are you so springy, bro? This one is wider than the E31. Fingers. Sweet papaya, this looks. Feast on this engine bay, boys and girls. That's some proper neglect. We have strong 80s and 90s vibes in the shop tonight. Two generations of the 3 Series, E21 and E30, both six cylinder, E32 750IL, and another 12 cylinder, E31 850i with a six speed manual. 
lovely. Just lovely. First things first, we need to replace the timing belt. There's a very good chance that's going to snap if you try to start the car with that one. It's over 26 years old for sure, probably even more. So why risk it and kill this engine even before we start? But I'm thinking some vacuuming is in order as well. That's marginally better. At this point, I would have put some protection on the fenders, but there isn't much to protect because paint is 101% shot. This one is a little bit torn. So you can't actually remove this air filter box because the this alien stuff is bolted to it. Filter, actually not terrible. That's surprising, is there a date on it? Oh, that's gonna be brilliant. It's full of rust. Oh, what is that? There's something living in the thermostat. Yuck! I'm actually scared of working on this car. I'm thinking brake cleaner, hot to kill, whatever that is. Die, die. Let's just plug that and ignore it for now. There we go. There's a bolt on the front holding this fan clutch. Come to us. It looks like the previous bastard who worked on this car was so angry that he took a bite out of the fan clutch. So I need to cut this clamp here because the thing is rusty. Oh no, look at that. It's so rusty. Oh, look at that. I think you're gonna need a hazmat suit here. Have a look-see there. And look at that as well. How I'm gonna get this car running is beyond me. Let's poke the bear for a minute. Plug that and let's say we didn't see that. 1979, the original radiator to this car. All right, time to admit something. I made a mistake. I should have pressure washed this engine bay. I never do it because I don't like introducing water into these old engine bays. But on this car, it's whatever at this point. It's really bad and I don't feel like breathing in this dust anymore. So I'm gonna push it out and fire up the pressure washer. This car does not have any brakes. I think, if memory serves me right, it has a parking brake. <laughs> oh, who cares if I get water in the interior? I'm on my own today, so I can't push the car back inside, so I'm just gonna continue wrenching outside. It is a nice cloudy day after all. Ah! What in the world happened to this car? There's just no way around it. This entire engine is gonna need a rebuild. I think now we're gonna remove the ignition wires. Not looking good at all. What do you think? Did the timing belt already snap? If it did, that's game over. It doesn't look like it. That's good. Oh boy, that's loose. It actually formed the shape from sitting. So the water pump is frozen solid, which is not surprising given what we just found in the cooling system. The denser is out. Now we're going to remove the spark plugs and then I can rotate the engine and set it at TDC. So surface rust and scoring in pretty much every cylinder. Six, three, one, all of them look really bad. And as I said, I already put WD-40 and fogging oil for men inside. And now we're going to do the same again. Moment of truth, will this engine actually turn by hand? Sure will. Actually, rather easily. Good. The crank and the camshaft are still in alignment. That is great. And I didn't feel much resistance when I was turning this engine over, which is also good. At this point, I'm not going to remove the timing belt because I'm still waiting on some parts, water pump and the pulley. In the meantime, I'm going to pop the wall cover off and see what the engine looks like on the inside. Is that rust inside? How did rust form in 
outside there. Hello, it smells very fuely. Not too bad, not too bad at all. Don't see excessive wear on lobes, which is good. Oil, incredibly, all of the lobes look perfect. Since we're already here, might as well check, well, clearance, clearance. So the camshaft lobe is pointing downwards and we have 0.25 millimeter filler gauge. Slide it in, way, way too loose, needs adjustment. So loosen the nut. What's with the birds? So we want it adjusted where you can feel slight drag, which this is, and then we can tighten it all the way. Mark it and move on to the next one. Just finished, all of them were out of spec, either too tight or too loose, and now they're perfect. Now we're gonna remove the sprayer bar and clean it. That's nice and clean and it can go back. Now I'm gonna remove fuel injectors. These are mechanical fuel injectors. As you will notice, there are no electrical connectors on it. The one on the back was already removed by someone else and it is just disgusting and full of rust. So I need to see what all of them look like and if it's possible to clean them. If not, I need to purchase new ones. No, so it just comes out that easily. Fingers. Again with the girly noises. <laughs> now the wall cover can go back, which I cleaned up a little bit. These are properly bad, especially the last one that was on cylinder number six. That looks to be completely corroded. But these are fully mechanical injectors, so I'm just gonna throw them into ultrasonic cleaner and hopefully that brings them around. The last one, I don't think so, so I'm gonna buy at least one brand new one. They're around 20, 25 euro each, but I don't wanna throw a ton of money at this car before we get it running. So for now, I'm just gonna try and well, save these. Let's shoot some brake cleaner through this thing, see if anything comes out. Negatory, salvatory. Oh, look at that. I've actually unclogged this one. It didn't do that before. That one is a no-go. That one came around as well. Oh, even the rusty one is coming back around but the spray pattern is really poor. Found some innocent victims who helped me push this turd back in. Now we're gonna look inside the fuel tank and see how rusty that is. It has essentially two fuel tanks, left and right side, so I'm gonna remove fuel sending unit on the right side, look inside, and if it's really rusty, then we need to remove both of them and clean them. Brand new one per side is between 700 and 800 euro, really cheap. So let's just see what lurks inside. It's locked. no longer locked. Oh, that's right. This one is stuck. I need access, man. Oh. What does that do? Well, it'll lean back, but I don't need gangsta mode. There's a hook on the bottom. There we go. So this is where the fuel sending unit lives. First we're gonna vacuum and then disconnect all of this crap and pull it out. Unplug the plug! <clears throat> Alright, some hammering action is required now. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. Do not quote Harry. I am not chuffed with that. I guess on the bright side, it's not rusty, but it is all sorts of varnishy and disgusting. There's black goo all over inside, so we definitely need to drop both fuel tanks and clean them. And the smell, ooh, I can't even begin to describe it. Look at the fuel sending unit. That's bad. And what's also bad is that you cannot buy that separately. <coughs> oh my God. So the float ain't floating. So I'm gonna see if I can remove this thing on the bottom. Oh my God. It 
So you can imagine the condition of the rest of the fuel system. Since this is really expensive to buy new, I'm just gonna dump all of this into the ultrasonic cleaner and see what happens. My landlord has one of these ultrasonic cleaners. One of these days I'm gonna get one as well. But for now I'm gonna use his. So, injectors. The smell of this, it's so bad. Whatever it does, it does. I checked last night and this is no longer available. You cannot buy a brand new. Discontinued. This thing still needs to warm up and then all of this is going to cook for a few hours and hopefully it'll come out looking better. To remove the fuel tanks on this car actually looks fairly simple. We have one hose connecting the two, fill neck over there, and the good thing is the exhaust and the drive shaft, everything goes above. So just a couple of bolts here and this is gonna drop out. Remove this heat shield first. Now it's the moment to be thankful that you don't have smell of vision because this is going to be bad. Yeah. Oh my. Oh, I hate that smell. There's a vent hose on the top. I'm going to remove the filter now. Uh, the fuel filter is from 1986. Uh. So I gotta replace all of this plastic that's way too brittle. I don't even know where this thing goes. It goes into the fender. But while we are here, we can admire the floor of this car. It's just immaculate. 41 year old and it is Immaculate. Look at those lines. There's still beautiful shine on them. You would never ever see this on a car that was used all its life in Germany. Stuff like this you can only see on cars that lived in good climates. Italy, Spain. That's, it's just really impressive. The bones of this car are really, really, really good. I'm just going to give them a quick wash on the outside. I'm gonna keep a social distance from those fuel tanks because if you know the smell of varnished fuel, you know it just follows you everywhere and it bites on your lungs. It's really bad. I think behind this Mercedes, it's a safe place to talk. So if you have really bad fuel tanks that are especially rusty in the inside, you should use Evaporust. Air China tested a few of them not long ago and Evaporust came out the best. But with these particular fuel tanks, I don't think they're rusty inside, just really gummed up from old fuel. At least the right one didn't have any rust. We're gonna look with the endoscope inside the left one as well. And if that's the case, then I wanna start with softer way of cleaning it. I'm gonna use acetone to try and dissolve all of that sludge. The best product you can use to dissolve it, it's something called methyl ethanol. I don't remember the exact name, but I'm gonna put it up on the screen. But the thing is in Germany, I cannot get that stuff fast enough. It takes about a week, week and a half to get it. So I'm gonna start with acetone, see how that works. If it doesn't work, then I'm gonna step up with some other stuff that I also have coming, some products that are specially made for cleaning the fuel tanks. But as I said, I don't wanna use like chemicals that's gonna strip the whole fuel tank if I don't need to. So let's look inside and then come up with the game plan. I'm already hating this. The entire shop smells like varnish and it's really unpleasant. Time for fuel tank colonoscopy. Well, good news, it's not rusty, just full of varnish. Hopefully you can see somewhat, this is the inside of the fuel tank. And as I said, it looks pretty good. I don't see any rust, the metal is nice and shiny. All of this is just varnish and sludge buildup. And that's what we need to clean. So we're gonna kick off with acetone and see what happens. Well, I don't have such tiny fingers. Do I need to get the pliers for this, really? There we go, cheers. I think we're gonna need something stronger than acetone. Okay, so I have chemicals in the car. Evaporust is coming in a couple of days. In the meantime, I have this stuff. It has some German words on it, benzene, diesel. You can use it on military tanks. So that ought to be good. I think I'm gonna get this acetone out and then dump this stuff in it along with some screws, shake it like a maniac and leave it overnight. Let's see what Aston did. What do you say to that? 
Oh yeah, all 500 of them. Washers, because why not? Perfect. Now I just need to close this with something. Let's use goose tape for now. It's working slowly. I hear this is what NASA uses to seal their tanks. I'm gonna continue shaking this like a lunatic, do the same with the other one, leave it overnight and see what tomorrow brings us. This has been cooking overnight. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Didn't work as well as I hope it would. There's still a very thick layer of gunk on the bottom that needs to be dissolved and this stuff appears to be not dissolving it. So you can see it's better, but there's still a lot of gunk on the bottom. I think we're gonna try this next. This stuff is by far working the best. It's been in there for about an hour and I can already see dissolving all of that crap on the bottom. Most of the major big chunks are gone. And I'm gonna run to the store and get more of this stuff. It has acetone in it and many other chemicals and stuff. Look at that. Look at the color of it. So this stuff is definitely working well. It's actually difficult to show on camera, but the bottom of the fuel tank is nearly perfect. Earlier, all of that was just full of thick gunk and now it's nearly clean. So I'm gonna add more and hopefully even that, what's left in the corner is gone. Gonna dump around five, six liters in it. That's gonna sit overnight and hopefully by tomorrow, it's gonna look brand new. So here is the lot after ultrasonic cleaning, the fuel injectors and the fuel sending unit. And this actually looks great, a lot better than before. And the float is floating freely. And it might actually work. None of these wires or anything inside is torn or broken. And the new unit is discontinued. So we're gonna go with this and see what happens. These lines here were completely clogged as well, but now I unclogged them. The strainer actually cleaned up a lot better than I was expecting. And again, this is not something you can buy brand new. So we're just gonna assemble all of this together and plop it back into the tank when the time comes. Putting the fuel adventure to the side, we can proceed with the timing belt. Now I wanna loosen the bolts for the camshaft pulley and the oil pump pulley. If you remember from the E30 video, this is early M20 pulleys and they are known for breaking, cracking and so on. So I've updated ones that I'm going to install. It's kind of relevant at this point since we are trying to get the car running, but I'm already in here. So I'm also going to replace the camshaft seal that's behind it. It costs like five euros, so might as well. So the engine is set at TDC and now we're gonna remove this thing here and the open pulley as well. So now you're gonna unbolt the tensioner. This thing is toast. It barely spins and it's making noise. What is this thing? Lucas. To be honest, it's not horrible, horrible. It actually held up pretty nicely given its age. Oh, actually there's a crack right over there. So definitely a smart thing to replace. Now we're going to remove the frozen water pump and see the state of the block. Oh my God. <sighs> At least some of the coolant is coming out. My oh my. Don't think I've ever seen a water pump this bad. Don't see a date on it. I think as long as this crap is limited to this section here and not inside the block, we might be okay. So good news, it doesn't look like there's this crap inside the block, just here around the water pump and probably here around the thermostat housing, which we're also going to remove. I can't even look at this anymore. Perfect. Ladies and gents, I worked in a lot of cars and I've never ever seen anything disgusting as this. It's just utterly appalling. I can't even, we're gonna jam a garden hose in here and see what comes out. This car running again, there's a very tiny chance that's going to happen. I removed that coolant hose on the back of the head. Now I'm gonna put the garden hose in there and see if anything comes out on the front.
Look at that rusty water. At least it's flowing. Okay, that's fine for now. We're gonna do more of that a bit later. I was saving this beer for the end. When, if we get this bucket of destruction running, but I need thinking juice now. Cheers. In fact, I just decided I don't want to look at that water pump anymore. Maybe tomorrow it turns into a tomato. <laughs> anyway, tomorrow is a brand new day. The battle will continue. So I'll see you then. I'm back, reasonably sober, so we can proceed. Got all of the parts to complete the timing belt job, so let's get it done. Let's quickly replace the camshaft seal. Remove the o-ring. And now we need to get the seal out. Hit it on the edge. And it should come out. Easy as that. That's nice and clean. Fresh oil. Perfect. Now we're going to start prepping the surface for the new water pump. 3M bristle disc. Okay, I think we're going to flush the coolant one more time and then we are ready for the assembly. That'll do it for now. Once the car is up and running, I'm going to put some liquid moly coolant flush in it and flush it again with a garden hose and hopefully that removes most of this crap. As long as nothing is clogged, we're good. If there are clogged passages and stuff, we're not so good. Thermostat housing, it's ruined. I cleaned it up as best as I can, but it's far too gone. This is all corroded, piece of pipe missing here, crap inside that you can't even clean. So this is going to leak, but I don't have a replacement one right now. So we're gonna run it until I can find a good used unit or I'm just gonna buy a brand new one. Brand new water pump. Now you're gonna replace the old pump pulley. Here's the old one versus the new one. This is newer, much sturdier design. So you're gonna go with that. Same deal with the camshaft pulley. Old design, newer one. Brand new tensioner, pin and spring. So now I'm going to push the tensioner, lock it so we can install the belt. Now I need to make sure that all of the marks are still lined up. Crankshaft, distributor, and the camshaft. New timing belt, Billy Gates. First around the crank. Perfect. Still nice and tight. I need to loosen this bolt here. That's tensioning the belt. Now we're gonna rotate the engine a couple of times and make sure all of these marks are still lining up. Three full rotations and it's still perfectly lined up everywhere. So we're good to go. So now we can tighten all of the bolts. Tensioner bolt. And now the fuel injectors, here is the new one. So the old ones, after cleaning, spray exactly the same. Which is great, means we can reuse them. I will not use, however, the rusty one. Was it this one? Yes, because the tip is rusted and here as well. So that one we're not gonna use, so instead we're gonna use brand new one. This is the old rubber rings, sealing things. They're just plastic, so here are the new ones that we need to put on.
All of them are in. Now we can put back the wall cover. And now the spark plugs. Done. Now we're gonna go for a brand new filter. Now we're gonna replace the distributor arm. This one is shot. Like that. And this is the one from the E30. It's in good condition. I use some sandpaper to make sure this is clean and ready to go. These are all the ignition wires from Project Marbay, the E30. I just verified that all of them are good. New cap, well, new wish, in good condition. So all of this can go back together. Now I'm gonna put back the thermostat cover without the actual thermostat. For the beginning, I want coolant to flow everywhere and we can start flushing some of this stuff out. And then when the time comes, I'm gonna replace the entire thermostat housing and install a brand new thermostat. The radiator goes back in, flushed it several times, but it's, it's shot. So much rust inside, but for the purpose of getting the car running, It'll do. That's everything in the engine bay done. We're gonna add water and coolant flush a bit later. Now we're gonna drain the oil. Lovely caked up stuff. Ooh wee! That is incredibly black. No water, but incredibly disgusting. Never seen 19 mil oil drain plug before. That's really on there. New filter going in. Snug it up. Fresh oil. By the way, I learned that these old M20s, also M70, prefer dyno oil, mineral oil. So I'm gonna use this for now, but if we get this car running, I wanna do an engine flush in it as well. And then I have some different uh, oil coming from the Kumoli for it. We are at the point where we can crank over the car. Everything in the engine bay is assembled, it has oil. The fuel system is in pieces. I'm gonna disable the ignition coil, put the battery in, and then we can find out if the starter works and hopefully build up some oil pressure. So let's do that now. Okay. All right, let's see if the cluster lights up. No, don't do that. Stop it. Nope, not the fan. Nice. Signs of life. That's good. Do we have lights? Well, yes, we do. Let's see if the starter works and if the engine spins. Oh yes, the sweet sound of engine cranking. She's gonna run, boys and girls. She's gonna run. Sounds okay, no banging, clapping noises, everything sounds good. Good, now I'm really motivated to proceed with the fuel system and let's get this puppy running. So all we need now is spark, fuel, bit of compression and this thing has to run. It just has to. I've never seen so many hoses and stuff in the fuel system, so I'm gonna try and explain as best as I can. This is where the fuel tank resides. This line here that doesn't have a hose on it, that is the return line. This is the feed line. And this big hose here goes from the fuel sending unit and that's the feed line that goes from the fuel tank here into the fuel pump, but it actually splits. One part of it goes into this thing here, which is an accumulator and uh, there's a pipe on the top of the fuel pump that also goes to the accumulator. And then there's one pipe from the accumulator that goes into the fuel filter, goes through it, and then it goes all the way to the front of the engine with this line. So we're gonna refresh everything in this area here, just to make sure everything is good to go. And then I'm gonna remove these two lines at the front of the engine, at that alien device thing. 
and then use some compressed air and blow them out. This one has some crap at the top here. Not sure about this one, but we'll find out. So I'm gonna try and drop all of this as one unit and that way I can start replacing everything one by one on the table and not mix up anything. There we are. That's looking mighty filthy. Oh. There you are. So I'm gonna go and wash all of this. There you have it. After a bit of scrubbing, these brackets are nearly new. Wow. For the fuel hose, I'm using Cooline 2240.0600. And this is OEM quality. Cooline actually makes fuel hoses and other stuff from BMW. And this is heat resistant up to 125 degrees Celsius. So really good quality. This is how the fuel clamp looks like on this car. This is original BMW part, the same one you can get from the dealer, just a normal worm style clamp. And you saw me using ABBA clamps in the past, which are really good quality, but I couldn't find one that really is to my liking. The blue ones that I use are really nice, but blue is kind of sticking out too much. So I ended up finding these. These are from the company called Ideal, and these are W4 stainless steel clamps. They are nearly identical to BMW ones the band and everything, the screw is a little bit bigger, but these are stainless steel and they cost 80 cents each. These are nearly two euro each from the dealer. And you think that's not too much, but when you go through hundreds of these, it adds up, trust me. So I think from now on, I'm gonna be using these because stainless steel, it's not going to rust and it's going to clump just as fine as this one. <clears throat> Good, now I'm gonna go clean this up as well. These lines are all clean. I used brake cleaner and compressed air. Now I'm gonna torque this. Perfect. Now we're gonna blow out these two lines here. <clears throat> Put some throttle cleaner in it. Look at that. <clears throat> these lines here are feeding the turn line, so I'm gonna crack open each and blow some compressed air through them. Right. Bit more throttle-licious cleaner. Oh yeah, that's definitely working. Have a look-see here. That line was full of crap and gunk as well. And this is why it's so important to do all of this before you actually start the car, because all of this would have ended up in that alien looking thing and made things 100 times worse. Now I'm gonna flush it from the back as well, and now I'm going to put a clean carbon fiber towel, and let's see what comes out. Look at that. More, let's do more. That's crazy. I've spent an entire bottle of throttle cleaner and brake cleaner, and it's finally clean and it took me more than half an hour to do one line now i gotta do the same with the other one that's the second line and as you can see it's just delicious so i ran out of throttle cleaner and i'm on my fourth bottle of brake cleaner and i think i have one more bottle left and i'm going to be impressed if this thing actually works I'm not gonna take it apart because it's a complex device. There are many special parts and stuff in it. So we're gonna try and run it with that, but I might need to do something about this thing as well. 17 years later and the fuel lines are finally clean. This was really boring, but definitely necessary. Now we need to replace these rubber lines that serve for fuel tank ventilation. This is the filler neck. Then there's an expansion tank, conveniently located here, as you can't see. And then there's one long line going from there all the way underneath the car and connecting to the fuel tank. All of that is ruined and we need to replace it. So I'm gonna tug on this, hopefully I don't break anything and pull all of this out. Yeah, there it is. <coughs> Ooh, that stinks. <coughs> so start feeding this line. Mm. 
Brilliant, that job is done as well. This is the old line that had this plastic connector. Here's the new one. I actually tried to find a metal one, but couldn't, so I had to order this from the dealer. It wasn't that expensive, but it's kind of annoying that it's plastic. Doesn't matter though, that's how they designed it. There we go. That's the fuel pump and accumulator done, and we're gonna install the filter once the tanks are back in. So let's move on to that. Let's see what we have. Good. Means it's working when it's this ugly color. Still a couple of hard spots, but pretty good. No rust, which is important. So this is the stuff that I told you about earlier. I managed to find it and it's called methyl ethyl keton. I mean, I'm not a chemist, but that's some good, strong, poisonous chemical. It's been in the fuel tank for two nights now. And as you can see, it's doing its thing. Now I'm gonna get some fresh petrol, get all the screws out clean it one last time and we can put this back on the car. That's it, no more screws. All right, I'm gonna run to the gas station and get some fresh petrol. Just finished rinsing both fuel tanks and we're at the point where they're as clean as they can be. For 41 year old fuel tanks, they look pretty perfect. There are no more big chunks of varnish left inside, some stains, yes, but absolutely no varnish or anything that can clog up the fuel pump and injectors. You can see some stains over there and I tried to agitate them as well with a brush, that's not coming off. And it was sitting with that stuff for two nights in it and if it didn't dissolve in that, it's not going to dissolve in petrol either. So this is pretty clean, I'm happy with it. Now I'm going to plop back the fuel sending unit and these are going back in the car, finally. I don't remember how this goes back. Brand new O-ring. I think like that, but I'm not sure. All right. Fuel tanky all going back in. In there. Oh, there it is. It's in. All right, now I have to go up top. Oh, I see. Oh, I'm very flexible today. Abort. Oh, yeah. Flip this sucker the other way. I need to run and get my seven millimeter. Schnell! Brand new hose. Come on, you can. Fuel filter going in. Finally done with the fuel system. Now we can add some go-go juice and see how much of it leaks out. Oh, Dios mio. We're gonna add this into the mix as well. Fuel system cleaner from Liquid Molly. Just out of curiosity, let's see if the fuel gauge is working. We have about 15 liters of fuel in the tank. What? Look at that. Seems about right. Should be a bit more, but I'm gonna add more fuel and then we're gonna check again. I added more fuel, we should have around 30 liters in the fuel tank. Ah, oh, you bastard. I gave it a few love taps. Yep, there we go. That's pretty accurate now. It's not working brilliantly. As you can see, it's moving about, but I guess that's better than not working at all. Now we're gonna add a liquid moly cooling system flush. This should help with flushing the system. I did clean the expansion tank as well. I'm gonna add a little bit of coolant and then the rest is going to be water. I don't wanna waste coolant since we're going to flush the system seven million times. This is it, the big moment. Will it actually start? I've put about two weeks of my time into this car, so hopefully it does. Regarding the fuel distributor, I did a bit of research this morning and I found a kit to rebuild it. It's not that expensive, around 70 euros, and it's all O-rings and stuff to make it not leak, but at the same time we can clean it because that's probably gummed up. But right now we're gonna flip the key and see what happens. Maybe it starts. Let's do it. I am excited and nervous at the same time. Rest a little bit. Okay. 
something happened and it sprayed fuel. Warum? Could it be that this thing is... No, there's stuff flowing through it. But we have a leak in the back. It started leaking on this connection over here. I didn't torque it properly. And just now I realized that you can put a wrench here and then give it a good twist. So now it's nice and tight and hopefully it doesn't leak anymore. Try number two, but before it didn't sound like it was trying to fire. So maybe we don't have spark. I don't know. I could see fuel flowing through the lines, but let's try it again. Oh, come on. Okay, it's wanting to start. Oh, come on! Again, a ton of leak in the back. I don't understand it. <sighs> All new crush washers, torqued properly. And let's see, if it leaks again, then we definitely have some issues. Either this pipe has some damage that I can't see, or there's too much pressure in the fuel system and it's just letting go at the weakest link. So, I don't know. Let's try it again and then we'll figure it out from there. Let's go! You need to start. It's close to firing up. Something ain't right. All right, I think I'm gonna remove one of the injectors and see if we're getting fuel. We are getting some fuel, not sure if that's enough. Do we have spark? Is the next big question. All right, we definitely have a spark. So let me check this injector here as well. Yeah, definitely has fuel, but I think it's flooding it. So we got spark, we got fuel, air. Maybe that volume flow thingy is not happy. Or there's no compression. So this thing here, I think it should go down to let some air in or go up but it's not moving whatsoever. Okay, last try before I go home for dinner. I pulled the fuel pump fuse. I'm thinking it might be giving too much fuel, so I'm just gonna use starter fluid and see if that makes any difference. If I can just get it to fire off, that would be nice. Oh, it's so close. By the way, the starter is sticking like crazy. So close. So I think we do have an issue with the distributor. It's either giving too much fuel or not enough, but I'm thinking too much because that injector number one was spraying so much fuel, way too much for a cold start. And these injectors, they don't fire click, click, like normal electronic fuel injectors. They shoot fuel constantly, all the time. That's how they work. Anyway, I'm gonna go home for dinner. Maybe I come back later if my better half lets me. I'm back, showered and fed, and I've got some updates. This thing here that allows air to enter the engine is stuck. Pierre from Belgium just sent me a video how one of these is supposed to work. It should move downwards, which it does, but it should also move upwards really easily. And when you crank the car, it should open and allow air to enter the engine. But this one is stuck, obviously. So when I was cranking the engine, it was getting fuel and spark, but it was not getting air. And with this fuel system, the fuel injectors, they're continuously spraying fuel, so I flooded the engine. Therefore, no start, no fire. So I'm gonna have to figure out what to do here. Probably take all of this apart and see what's the issue. After I flooded the engine and so on, I did a compression test, and the results are appalling, like horrible. The highest one is about six and a half bars, and the lowest one, the worst one, is cylinder number four, three or four bars, really bad. The rest of them are around five or six. And I don't think that's enough to get the engine going again. That's really low. That's like 70 PSI or something. Really, really bad. Nonetheless, when I was spraying starting fluid, it was close to firing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue. I'm not giving up just yet. Even though the engine is probably dead, there's no way to revive this thing. I have one last tiny bit of hope. So let's, let's try it again. Fired. Let's give it a rest, but it definitely fired. <laughs> it fired off. I can't believe it actually ran for like a second. That's just unbelievable. It has basically no compression whatsoever. I'm gonna put up the pictures if I already didn't. See, this is tricky. 
Come on, you can run for a little bit longer, don't you think? Oh! Backfired. That was exciting. Still have my arm here, that's good. Well, that was bound to happen, you know? With the fuel system back in place, it doesn't wanna fire off at all. Sounds horrible, but it's running. Woo! That's good. Me and my manly sounds. I think that's sign to leave it alone. It's definitely running. And <coughs> it's smoky in here. Mm. That backfire that you just saw, that happens when the combustion takes place outside the combustion chamber and it backfired in the intake. But nonetheless, I cannot believe that this thing actually ran. That was maybe five seconds. Not sure, maybe a little bit more. I don't understand, actually, because the compression, it doesn't really have any, and yet it's still running really poorly. But then again, this engine is really, really picky about fuel supply, especially with the KJ Tronic thingy. So as soon as they put the fuse in back for the fuel pump, it does not want to start. It's, it doesn't even want to try to fire. So there's definitely something wrong with this devil's device that we're going to troubleshoot in the next episode. Can we get it actually to idle for a couple of minutes? I'm not sure, but we are sure going to attempt in the next episode. Man, what a battle. What a battle. Definitely the worst car I ever worked on, condition-wise. 26 years out of service. But we did get it to run for 5 to 10 seconds, so we're just going to have to take that victory for now. Anyway, I'm going to go home. It's been a very long day. Eh, good night. I'm back again, and I had more time to do research. As I already said, this contraption here is bad. Inside this fuel distributor, there is a control piston that slides freely up and down, and in return, it controls this air baffle plate. And evidently, that piston is stuck, which means the engine is not getting any air, the fuel pressure is messed up, and it's flooding the engine. I have a rebuild kit coming for it, so I'll take it apart, and hopefully it's rebuildable. If not, I'll get a used unit. My goal right now is, can we get this engine to idle again? If that happens, can we get it to drive? And the brake fluid reservoir, that's missing entirely. So no brakes, no clutch, and all of these lines are open. So that'll be a challenge on its own. At this point, there's no way around it. The engine needs a complete rebuild, and that will happen once we start with the restoration. However, at this very moment, I don't have time or desire to take this thing apart. First, I want to finish E32, E31, E39 M5, and E30, which is nearly done. But if I can get it to idle again, then you can expect a new episode pretty soon. And at the same time, we'll try to get it to drive. Let's see how far can we take this revival. If I can't get it to idle, then I'm going to park it and we'll go big with this project when the time comes. The compression test that I did wasn't exactly accurate because the cylinders were washed out. But if it ends up running, we can warm it up, we can clean it, do Italian tune-up, and we check the compression with the engine fully warm up, which is the proper way to do it. Also see the state of the transmission, differential, and so on. I really do want to see it run and drive right now, as it'll be a huge motivation for me to continue. There's another thing about this card that I didn't mention, and that's that the papers are missing. They were lost. Normally, that's not a huge issue. If the car can pass German inspection and I can prove that I bought the car, I can get German papers. The problem is the guy that I bought the car from. He is a numbnuts. And he kept the original notarized purchase agreement, which we made, which I paid for, and which I need. If I can't get those original documents, then restoration of this car won't be possible. I can't register it. Anyway, I've been arguing with the guy for months now, and every time it's some different excuse. He insists on keeping the original documents even though he doesn't need them so it's just really really annoying in any case i hope that this was enjoyable the car did quite literally fire for the first time in 26 years and that's something as always thank you very much for watching perhaps subscribe if you like what you saw and as spaniards would say outfit is in